Treasure Island, the most straightforward game name you could possibly think of. Yes, it's just directly based on the book. It, you're, there's a Long John Silver. The Black Spot, like the monkey, it's, everything. It's pirate themed. It's literally just fucking Treasure Island, the game. So here's the deal. The way it works is it's a lot like Fury of Dracula. One player is Long John Silver. Yeah, I played the first and only time I played this game, I was Long John Silver. And Holy the, shit, is that stressful and difficult. The other four players are... Pirates. Sorry, I don't remember if they're characters in the book or not. I assume they were. They're characters, whatever. They all they have slightly different powers. But I anyway, haven't read. I did. I, I've never read the book all the way through. Oh, I have. I read excerpts from it in like elementary school, but it was school? very long time ago. Yeah, I, I remember. I saw, the, I I saw the the one old movie. I have better memories of Muppet Treasure Island, which I saw several times. I remember Muppet Treasure Island better than I remember any other form of Treasure Island. That is true. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Animal Treasure Island is also good, isn't that the? Is it Miyazaki or Tezuka work? I've on never that? actually seen it. I haven't seen it either, but I just know it exists. Anyway, the point is, this game, uh, much like Fury of Dracula, has Long John Silver hiding a treasure instead of running around Europe like Dracula, yep. and four play up to four players working together to find the treasure, but. They're not really together. Unlike Fury of Dracula, they're competing to who gets the treasure first. Yup. And the other conceit that's interesting is that Long John Silver, the game is basically Long John Silver is being interrogated by the pirates. He's in jail. So he's, on the island somewhere. So first, he's just being interrogated, and you have to use cards and basically give clues about where the treasure is. Right, well, Long John, is, while he's being interrogated, gives clues to the interrogators. But then at some point, during the, like one of the turns, one of the players puts Long John in a prison on the island somewhere. Right, there are several prisons on the map. Long John is in one of them. At some point, you find out which one he's in. Eventually... To the end of the game, if none of the pirates found the treasure, Long John breaks out and now moves around the map with the same rules as the players. And if Long John gets to his own treasure, he wins. Fuck you all. Right. Uh, one other thing is that Long John is giving these clues to the players, whether they use their powers or just every turn he has to sort of do something or every so often he has to give information to the interrogators. But he can lie up to two times during the game. He doesn't actually have to lie, but... Two of his clues, all the clues must be true, except up to two of them may or may not be true. Right? Yep, and the may or may not is key yep. because I one of my lie attempt, like possibilities of lies, I actually told the truth to try to uh, double cross the players, and it worked on everyone right. but one player. Because you basically you tell the truth, you put the lying token next to it, a player uses their power to look at the token, and the other players they don't see, see it. They see a, that player now sees like a question mark, right? But they assume, oh, that means it's not true, and they invert that thing it's like no actually <laughs> so get this this happened in the game so our friend tracy he the he assumed that the first clue i put down was a lie and he was right <laughs> well, i thought you're not allowed to lie in the first well, one, the first you, clue that you can't you, get a lie token until like the, the third. first no you get one lie token at the beginning of the game and you get one oh, about i thought you through. get one like after turn x or yeah something. you get the second one after turn x oh, okay you're very you have to put one clue out that you can't lie about before the game starts that's right then you put ones out the first one i put out that i had discretion I put the lie token, and I did lie. Mm. Tracy said before the game started, I bet Rim will put the lie tokens out but not actually lie. Mm. But then he used his power immediately to check to see if I lied on the first turn, and of course I did, and I did lie. He then played the beginning of the game, searching and acting as though he thought I was telling the truth, trying to trick the other three pirates into thinking that I had told the truth there when, in fact, he thought I had lied, and, in fact, I had lied. Mm -hmm. That was really well played. The point is, uh, this game, when you see it, is a huge ton of fun because you're not just moving around a map, right, you know, with little tokens like a normal game. You're drawing on the map. Everyone has a personal map that they can draw on. Yep. The game comes Including with, Long John Silver. Right. The game comes with like a, all these dry erase markers and a compass. You can draw radiuses, radii. Yep. There's right? a ruler. If you move, you like draw on the ruler how many miles you're going to move. There's there a smaller like rule for the mid ruler much, for the mini It's very theme appropriate. It's like you're using all these sort of nautical-ish, simpler, much simpler than actual nautical yeah. sextants or whatever. But, you know, tools to draw on this map, the shared map, as well as your personal maps. They give you a mini ruler so you can, you can use that on your tiny map, and the, it's at scale to the big ruler you use on the big map, right? So you can measure things out privately, you know, and it's like, oh, you can you can say, like, so, like, you'll be like, ah, yes, 
the the treasure is within three of one of these players. Yep. Stuff, stuff like that. But and then of all the players, they everyone, all know. Everyone starts drawing circles and being like, okay, it's got to be in one of these circles. But some of the clues are things that I hand to the other players. So each player knows like five sets of information independently of one another, and then collectively they know another set of information, but that set of information may or may not be true, and different players might have looked at different tokens. And the players share. aren't sharing info with each other. Hell right? no. So even though it might be like, if all the players shared info, they might know exactly where the treasure is right away, because they each have separate info, right? It's like, well, it's going to take any one player a longer amount of time to figure out where the treasure is. This also means that since I was Long John Silver... I was keeping track of, as best I could, the kinds of information I'd given to different players to try to give individual players worthless information to them if I had the opportunity to give just them information. Yep. yep. And I successfully gave two players fucking bullshit because I knew things they knew and I gave them the same information over and over again via different mechanisms. Yep. So that's basically how this game goes. Is but Long, the, but the, Long the, John tries to give as little information as possible. The players do a Scotland Yard, Fury of Dracula kind of narrowing down possibilities thing. They walk in. They walk along the map to the possible areas, use their searching ability, and attempting to find the treasure. So the fun part is that the placement rules for the treasure are literally, I just fucking mark an X anywhere. Yep. Like Anywhere on this whole, the map doesn't really have like a grid or anything. Nope. It's just a picture of an island with a bunch of features on it. And you put a dot on your private map and that's where the treasure is. And of course, what Scott was musing that I would do and what I did in fact do is I drew one goddamn pixel. That's and right. And I was like, it is here at the intersection of the edge of this building and this forest. Yeah, you're very precise in where the treasure was. So if someone came close and someone did. Someone like, came literally within like, they were like two a, millimeters <laughs> they were of a, the treasure. They were more like a centimeter They were away. less than a centimeter. But the point is, is they came real close and, and but their circle clearly was not on the spot you had selected. So yep. No treasure for you. And the way you search, and there's a fun little bit here, is you use this little ring, and you literally draw on the big map a circle around where you're searching, and the ring has to fit around your character, so where you move to, like, you're really limited, and then I have to decide if it's inside or not. The rule is, if there's any question as to whether or not it's inside, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Hence, I literally put a dot on my map, and then I use my fingernail to shave off pieces of that dot, because the felt to the markers only so precise to make it down to like this one pixel. And then I took a picture of it in case I accidentally smudged that one pixel off. Yep. But anyway, uh, the one very interesting mechanic in this game is that when players search, if they find the treasure, Long John takes this little cardboard treasure chest, puts the big treasure token well, in it, no, so hands it to the player, they open it, the big treasure's in there, they win. When anyone searches, what I did is I took the, the treasure chest, this big cardboard box, I either put nothing in it I put one of the mini treasures that I can give out at my own discretion. There's reasons why you would. Yep. Or if they got it right, I just would have put the big treasure in and not said anything. Right. That's what you're supposed to do. But the, what I'm saying is the clever mechanic is those small treasures. Yeah. Long John has to give out these clues as the game goes on to the players. But... There's a, it's like a deck of clues. The clues suck. You read these clues, it's like, wow, any one of these will just fuck me. Right, the clues, if you have to give those clues, if you give them honestly, which you have to do all but two times, you're just going to tell them where the treasure is. But if you give players these mini treasures when they search, right, then what you can do is if you've given en enough tiny treasures to the players, not the big treasure that makes you win the game, but the tiny ones, that gives you access to these other clues that are weaker clues. And using the weaker clues is much easier because now the, you won't have to basically give the whole game away with your giant lousy clues. But now you've given players very powerful tools to use. Yes, those tiny treasures give the players abilities that they can now use during the game. So it's like I can either give them TMI or I can give them less info but more abilities to make their search easier and you have to sort of figure out what you want to do. Meanwhile, players know this. They know that's how the game works. So what players can do, which I learned after the first game, is don't use your searching ability early in the game, and thus, Long John is forced to give the big clues. Yep. He can't give the little clues if you haven't searched, because then he can't give you the little treasures. Then again, you're also not searching. You're just walking around using other forms of clues and other actions besides the search action. So you got this balancing act going on. That's the cool part of the game. What I think is the problem with this game is that with intelligent players, 
I do not think Long John can win. So I played, I was Long John the first time I ever played the game. Mm-hmm. Two of the people at the table had already played this game multiple times. Mm-hmm. And all three of the pirates were very smart people. Yep. I was literally one turn from winning. I busted out of prison and I got right next to my fucking treasure. You would have gotten it next turn. You were yep. definitely in range. I did. They had narrowed down by the by the end of the game. Like they couldn't find the like treasure. Like I said, one person at on that t- previous turn had searched a, less than a centimeter away from the treasure location. They collectively narrowed it down to maybe six square centimeters on the entire map. Yep. Like they were so close. And then I got I couldn't get because I hoisted myself by my own petard because I drew my treasure dot as such a precise pixel I was literally less than half a centimeter away from being able to just win mm-hmm. and then I lost in the last last possible round yeah I think I mean that's what I think is I think it's it's calibrated in such a way I think if the players are not that good at searching or are less skilled I think a skilled Long John just wins. A skilled Long John would just dominate. Them, but I think right? a poor quality Long John will lose immediately. A poor quality Long John will lose immediately and give everything away, but amongst all skilled players where everyone is is up on up, I think that the Long John they can they can take the game into the late stages, but I don't think they can get away with it. It's, you know, I think what would be good is if you just kept exactly the same everything. Don't change a thing except make the map just maybe like six inches larger in both directions. Ah. That way, with the same exact clues, right, you're making it a little harder to narrow it down, and maybe at the end, you know, it might also be a problem, but at least the players might have two choices and have to pick one, Ah. right? And it's like, okay, well, the game comes down to luck then. Well, maybe it does, but at least it's not just sort of like this locked-in thing that's less I also feel like if you get really fine-tipped dry erase markers... You can make the game more interesting because it'll be I would a lot love more to precise. see a digital version of this game. Oh that was, hell yeah! That was pixel perfect with zooming in and zooming out. I would play. I would play that a lot. Where you had to literally click the exact pixel. I'm like a you know like you get like a like you do your search two, radius like a two thousand by two thousand JPEG and you must click. That would be what forty thousand pixels. Well, you got to search the area around your character that right. includes some number of right. pixels. Right, your search must include. That pixel specifically, if it is, if that pixel is just outside the edge of your radius, you didn't get it. But the moral is, like, th- in the end, this game is way fun and worth owning. Yeah, if you want to have a, a searching, finding game, I would rather play this than Scotland Yard. Well, because Scotland Yard... Uh, Slash Mr. X or whatever. If you are a computer scientist or even computer science adjacent, you can easily determine an algorithm that guarantees Mr. X will lose. Yes, uh, I would rather play this than Fury of Dracula because even though I like the hidden card movement and, and searching of Fury of Dracula a little bit better than the Treasure Island, I do not like any of the other parts of Fury of Dracula. Dude, busting out the compass and drawing a giant fucking circle on this map is right. really, really satisfying. Oh, yeah. Especially when the treasure is like a millimeter outside of that circle and oh, you're yeah. just like, nope, stone face. Yep. Uh, there is a game I played that you did not play called Cryptid, which as a hex map, oh, and yeah. I've you're, seen you're trying to find a chupacabra or, or equivalent, right? And it's uh, and there's rule and there's clues like uh, like you know different information than the players. Like, okay, I know it's not in a mountain hex. I know it's two away from a forest hex. That kind of thing. And you sort of narrow it down and see who can find it first. I played that game once and I won because I narrowed it down to three hexes and guessed and I guessed right. Uh, but uh, you know it's 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 similar, but. Uh, cryptid is while perfectly fine it does not have the fun of drawing with the sextant to the compass and all that biz the drawing makes it real fun yeah uh so in terms of while it is not perfect and has some flaws in terms of one versus many hide and seek games i think treasure island may be the current number one of ones that i have played This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music.